The late 90s and early 2000s were really a bastion of early monster taming media, both in terms of video games and television shows, and for many, this era acted as the basis for our nostalgia. For me, I remember waking up early before school and tuning in on weekends to YTV, which was Canada's version of Cartoon Network, I guess you could say, and indulging myself in many monster taming and monster taming adjacent TV shows. One of which, of course, was Pokemon, but there were many others that brought a lot of fun twists to what we consider monster taming, whether it be those that featured collecting or battling as a main focus. I do think that this shaped many of our monster taming tastes in the present. So with that being said, guys, today I want to present you with five monster taming TV shows or anime that you will remember and will likely give you a nostalgia chug. Number one, Digimon Adventure. All right, so this is obviously going to be the first on the list because the first thing most people think about when discussing monster taming outside of Pokemon and nostalgia is Digimon, one of Pokemon's earliest competitors. The Digimon Adventure series, as much as it has been milked in recent times for its nostalgia, was and still is a fun and interesting series to follow. Now, many will criticize the English dub, and by the way, all of these shows are from the perspective of someone who watched them in English, but I disagree that the dub is bad. One of the biggest criticisms when it comes to localization with regards to Digimon is the Digimon movie, which was actually cut into three different movies and put together for Western audiences. While I don't disagree that cutting the movie up, especially the final act, would have heavily dampered the amount of insight gained regarding the narrative, I still find myself absolutely loving the movie to this date, having one of the best movie soundtracks for a westernized anime, and a lot of fun dialogue. I can't remember whose video I watched that went in depth in the whole series, and one of the biggest criticisms was that they like to add a lot of self-deprecating comedy to Digimon's English dub, and while I could see that being something that is annoying to many, I can't help but love it. Anyways, if for some reason you don't know what Digimon Adventure was all about, basically Ty and his friends are at camp and then suddenly are sucked up into the digital world, a strange place where creatures known as Digimon exist, and they eventually discover that they are part of some Digimon legend, as they have the capability to strengthen their Digimon partners, allowing for them to become more powerful than they usually are. Honestly, I feel like this is the one on the list that requires the least amount of explanation, but yeah, if you haven't watched Digimon Adventure, or hell, Digimon Tamers, which I watched bits of as a kid, definitely do. Maybe it's my nostalgia talking, but it's hype AF. Number two, Metabots. Now, before you start saying, oh my god, Ed, that's robot battling, not monster taming, Metabots is essentially like any other monster tamer except that they use robots in battle instead of actual creatures. I mean, that's like saying Shin Megami Tensei is demon taming because demons aren't necessarily monsters or that Magnemite shouldn't be a Pokemon because it's a magnet robot thing and not a pocket monster. Anyways, the point I'm trying to make here is that you have to have some flexibility when it comes to the categorization of certain things. Otherwise, you can end up creating absurd situations where nothing is a monster tamer unless it fits into a very specific category. I'll also consider that there must be some level of distinction as well. Otherwise, anything can be a Mon game, but I think Metabots does fit here. Anyways, Metabots was a series about a young boy who lives in a world where you can purchase and battle these sentient robot creatures known as Metabots, whom have different combat capabilities. Each Metabot comes with its own unique chip, which sort of acts like its brain and soul, whilst all of its other parts can be swapped and replaced, kind of bringing in that collection aspect. I always thought that the series was super cool, and the concept definitely gives off those old school, from humble beginnings vibes we see in something like Pokemon, where any Anybody can be a trainer, anybody can battle, and anybody can get stronger if they work hard enough. While it's been literal decades since I've watched the show, one of my favorite things that I'm sure many of you who have watched the show might remember is that referee who just literally shows up every time there's a Metabots battle no matter what. He's prime meme material. Number three, Zatch Bell. Okay, so Zatch Bell is another one of those series where you have one human and one partner creature, which now that I've noticed, a lot of monster taming shows really only focused on the bond between one creature and one human, which does not exclude them from being monster taming, as monster taming consists of battling, collection, and or raising, but I didn't realize how many shows were like that, and I can definitely see why. If you think about it, even the Pokemon anime didn't have Ash catching a whole lot of Pokemon since it was imperative that through the story they build up the bond between the protagonist and all of their partners. Anyways, Zatch Bell was a series where once every 10 bajillion years, a bunch of creatures known as Momoto come down and have a free-for-all brawl to see who will be the next king of their world in sort of a battle royale. In doing such, they find a partner whom can unlock their potential by reading spells from a book. The stronger the bond between partners, and the more they battle together, the more the human could read from that book in order to unlock more abilities. This show was dope. 
I still remember the name of the main spell, which is like Sakair or whatever, and thinking that the whole book reading thing was such a cool concept. This much like every other show we're going to be talking about on this list, I have not watched since I was a kid and am a little foggy on the gritty details. The reason I chose not to go back and watch these shows prior to making this video was because I want this video to be from a very nostalgic perspective rather than the perspective of someone breaking it down after watching it many years later. That way I can go back and watch all of them in the future with a follow-up video to see if it was really just nostalgia that had me so hyped about them or if they truly do stand on their own. Number four, Beyblade. Okay, this by far is the weakest one on this list, not because Beyblade is bad. In fact, I thought the original series following Tyson and his friends around was awesome, but more so because the monster taming aspect is extremely vague, at least from what I remember. Basically, the show revolves around people battling these spinning tops against each other. And let me just say this show caused a frenzy when it came to actually buying the merch associated with it. Everyone had a Beyblade and we all thought that just like in the show, we could train them to become stronger. I still remember that scene in the show where Tyson was trying to make his Beyblade faster or something and he ended up getting a longer ripcord and then like running and jumping to increase the speed by four times, something like that. And literally everyone in my school started doing that. Basically the monster taming aspects get mixed in because some characters have Beyblades which have these creatures known as Bit Beasts which are like these spirit things or something. Tyson had Dragoon which was a dragon which is dope. These then would give them an edge in battle, and other characters had them, and uh, honestly, I had no idea why these existed or where they came from. I'm sure that question was answered at some point in the series, but I don't really care. This was yet another show that portrayed the idea that anyone could have a Beyblade, anyone could train it, anyone could get stronger, I guess as long as they had one of those bit beasts, but I'm pretty sure they were decently abundant. I also remember that years later, my friend told me that one of the series ended with some guy like growing wings and destroying a town with his Beyblade, which is pretty hilarious. Number five, Yu-Gi-Oh. Now, yes, Yu-Gi-Oh was a card game, but the show literally has monster battling and Yugi be talking to that Karibo a little too much. So I think it's at the very least a monster adjacent show that has heavy focuses in the monster battling and collection department with no raising elements. Anyways, Yu-Gi-Oh was another show that made very little sense to me as a kid, but was still pretty dope. Basically, it was an anime created to sell cards, much like Beyblades was an anime to sell toys, Digimon merch, etc. It focused around Yugi, whom growing up, I thought that red thing on the back of his head was some sort of piece of clothing and not his actual hair, and his friends as they pursue different goals with the main means to achieve them being hard battling. There's these millennium items that existed since ancient times, which have different powers, and the cards themselves have historical meaning and implications. The first season focuses around Yugi having to compete in a tournament in order to battle the creator of the cards himself in order to save his grandpa. The second season deals with Merrick, who's just a Chad. There was a season where they were like in a video game or something. I think that was filler and stuff like that. Also, the English dub was pretty famous for its introduction to the Shadow Realm, which a lot of people criticized because it was just a way to hide death from the show, much like Dragon Ball Z's Ocean dub used the next dimension, which, I mean, now that I think about it, is actually pretty accurate since they literally did go to another dimension when they die. But all I have to say is that the Shadow Realm has given birth to so many memes that its existence is not only tolerated, but instead celebrated. I honestly don't think Yu-Gi-Oh! would have done nearly as well as it did as a card game if not for this show. The show was awesome. All in all, I think a lot of these shows I mentioned today really shaped my interest in the monster taming genre as a whole, even if I only mostly consumed monster taming media as a kid through shows and not games outside of Pokemon. Like I said earlier, I really did think it was important to focus on the nostalgia aspect of these shows for this video because, I mean, the title says it all. I'd love to go back and make individual videos dissecting each of the shows one by one after re-watching them start to finish and comparing what was said here to how I feel after as well. That being said, definitely make sure to let me know in the comments which monster taming or even monster taming adjacent series gives you that old nostalgia chug. If you are a fan of monster taming franchises, definitely subscribe to my channel. We usually focus more on video games, but I would like to make videos on shows and other monster taming mediums here and there as well. We upload every day and keep it pretty chill here. You can also check out my Twitter, my Discord, and my Patreon linked below. Special thanks to my patrons, especially Jim Hamilton, Dark Persona, Drogos, and Exodus, and we'll see you guys next time. Peace.